going to use the Cards Gale, members and supporters of the National Party. It's with great regret that we have to meet here today under such draconian restrictions that are seeing half the Irish people locked into their homes if they're lucky enough to have a home. It is by no mistake that the Irish people in the last few months have had a great shadow lofted over them by an incompetent government and now find themselves staring into the face of a great evil. <coughs> the feeling lost in the wind of unknown, unequipped to now deal with the hardships they're now faced with. Some of our people have been left to feel unwanted, unloved and unheard and that their concerns will never be taken seriously. I'm sorry this state is failing you and is failing our people. For a multitude of reasons and in desperate search and as a final resort for solace, our kin are choosing to end their own lives. This is an alarm bell that has rung unheard for too long by those who occupy Dáil Erdn. They've chosen to ignore the most basic principle of living, that of a safe home and a secure future for our children. They've chosen not to honour our past, cherish our present and are prepared to sell our future. That, the first being that which must be safeguarded with the highest importance, for that is where the roots lie to a Gaelic Ireland. Hidden in the fables and tales taught to us as children, handed down to us for millennia, and if we heard in the present are to accept a whitewashed version of our history, to be told that we are somehow accountable for the wrongdoings of an empire that subjugated our people to absolute terror for 800 years, or that the martyrs of 1916 went out in repulsion of that empire and gave their lives in the defence of Ireland, then we will never know where we are going. They are already well on their way to this utopia, where every race of the world must forget its past and sacrifice its future in the pursuit of monetary gain. It is no mistake that this is happening and that our people now find themselves second class citizens in our homeland. It is by design that this plague of international finance capitalism has arrived on our shores. Our enemies are working hard to break our spirit, but to them, you're too late. For some of us have already awoken to the very real threat globalism poses to our people and by extension our nation and we have dug in for the long fight. We are prepared for the struggle to see that our people are guaranteed solace in an otherwise maddening world where insanity runs rampant. There is no greater struggle than for that of the prosperity of your people, for the bone of your bone for the blood of your blood, to Ireland's fathers, mothers, to our brothers and daughters, I say to you, you've been, you've been struck down, but you haven't been destroyed. You may feel persecuted, but you are not forsaken. For, for, God, for, for history shows us that God fights with small battalions. And as Pardic Pierce once said, if sometimes it has seemed otherwise, it is because the few who have fought the good fight have been guilty of some have been guilty of some secret of falterance, some infidelity to their best selves, some shrinking back in the face of a tremendous duty. I swear to you that we will not shrink in the face of this unimaginable tyranny. We will take a stand like those who before us took a stand and for them and for our children and for the generations to come after us, we will not falter. We will not succumb to the darkness. We will not shrink in the face of this unimaginable tyranny. We will rise together with the sun, hand in hand, and we will free our race from servitude. Er, yes, er, right.